This is ABC 7 News at 11, your Suncoast News. We're here for you. Good evening, I'm Jacqueline Matter. Thanks for joining us. Topping our news tonight, police in Bradenton will be taking a closer look at some of the city's most dangerous intersections, including many areas where pedestrians and bicyclists have been struck and at times even killed. ABC 7's Rick Adams joins us live from the corner of Manatee Avenue West and 9th Street West with more on their efforts. Rick. Yeah, Jacqueline, good evening. This is one of the most dangerous intersections. Police are looking at this one and three others. Crashes between cars and pedestrians and bicyclists have become an all too common sight at intersections like this in Bradenton. Antonio Murray lives near 9th Street West and 21st Avenue West, which is one of the most dangerous intersections in the city. He tells us two years ago, his 16 year old daughter was struck by a vehicle near the intersection. Luckily, she survived that crash. She was crossing over to go to the bus stop. And uh, she said she didn't see a car. And by the time she got on this side of the road, car hit a boom, flipped over the hood, what have you. And, um, it's just unsafe. Police say the four most dangerous intersections in Bradenton are Manatee Avenue West and 9th Street West, 9th Street West and 21st Avenue West, Manatee Avenue West and 43rd Street West, and 1st Street and 13th Avenue. Jay Thacker owns the Express Food Mart at the corner of 9th Street West and 21st Avenue West. He says the intersection near a store isn't safe. So far I saw like two accidents, you know, one with the bike and one was like with the car to car. In Manatee County alone, there were 13 pedestrians and two bicyclists killed last year, which is slightly down from the previous year. Bradenton police will once again have officers positioned at the most dangerous intersections, educating folks and at times ticketing pedestrians, bicyclists and drivers who break the law. It's all thanks to a grant they'll be receiving from the University of South Florida Center for Transportation Research. Murray says having the police keeping an eye on the dangerous intersections is a good thing, but he believes a lot more can be done to keep folks safe. A signal would be proper in this area right here, four-way or light. And police say once they receive this grant, they will move ahead with this, which should be in the coming weeks. Reporting live from downtown Bradenton this evening, I'm Rick Adams. Jacqueline, back to you. All right, thank you, Rick. Well, now let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan for a look at your first alert forecast, Bob. Jacqueline, right now it's uh, pretty warm out there, 80 <laughs> degrees. Currently we have fair skies, a few clouds around. The dew point temperature is fairly high at 73 and winds are out of the east at 8. The pressure fairly high too at 30.03 inches. That continues to rise at this point. That dew point temperature will be going down as a result of some drier air that is moving in. Right now some showers still lingering, mainly offshore. Now those are weakening as they push off toward the west and continue to dissipate. So no rain anticipated overnight. It will stay fair and looks like temperatures will be slightly above average. I mentioned that dry air. You can see it. It's covering much of the Bahamas now stretching all the way over to South Florida. It will continue to feed in around an area of high pressure, which is located off the Carolina coast on that east to southeasterly wind flow, bringing that dry air and keeping it here in place. So another sunny and warm day anticipated for us throughout the day on Tuesday. Uh, you can see temperatures right now pretty warm for this time of year. Upper 70s to low 80s from Venice to Inglewood, Northport, Mayaca City, Braden and Cortez all at 80 degrees or above. The water temperature now uh, still very warm at 85 degrees and temperatures a little bit uh, cooler well in but not much. And in the tropics, we're watching this area right here. It's moving off to the west, although with all that dry air around, we don't anticipate it developing. And we have a tropical storm off in the Atlantic and could soon become a hurricane. We'll have the latest on Ophelia coming up in just a few minutes. Jacqueline, back to you. All right, thank you, Bob. Two women who lived at a Florida nursing home that lost air conditioning during Hurricane Irma have passed away, becoming the 13th and 14th fatalities linked to that home. 90-year-old Cecilia Franco and 95-year-old Francesca Andrade died from illnesses that they suffered when the nursing home lost power during Irma. The Hollywood police spokeswoman didn't say exactly when the women died, but said police are treating the deaths as part of that ongoing criminal investigation. Franco's husband, who had also lived at the home, died on September 13th. No one has been charged, but the state has suspended the home's license. Last week, the facility let go of 245 workers, including doctors, nurses, and therapists.
Meanwhile, a third bill has now been filed in Tallahassee to try and make sure that similar deaths don't happen again. Republican Senator Renee Garcia filed a bill that would require nursing homes and assisted living facilities to have emergency power sources and fuel supplies that would last for at least four days. Facilities could store those generators and fuel either at their facility or contract with a company that could provide them in a timely manner to meet that requirement. The bill would also require the Florida Public Service Commission to make sure that utility companies restore electricity to medical facilities with 50 residents or more first. Some nursing homes are very Medicaid heavy and those are the ones that we as a state have to find the resources and the monies to make sure that we get them to that point so they can have the, the generators and the adequate um, cooling mechanisms to take care of them and that's going to have to be incumbent upon the House and the Senate to work together to find those dollars to ensure that they have that available. Separate legislation filed in the House last week also seeks to ensure power restoration for nursing homes and hospitals is a priority after hurricanes and other emergencies. Property insurance claims from Hurricane Irma are continuing to rise. The claims have now just hit $4.6 billion in estimated losses. As of Friday, over 703,000 claims had been filed from the deadly storm. Of the claims filed, payments had been made on about 105,000, while nearly 70,000 had been closed without any compensation for policyholders. Claims were filed in all 67 counties, with Miami-Dade County having the largest number, totaling just over 87,000. Governor Rick Scott providing an update on resources being deployed to Puerto Rico to help with recovery and response efforts there. The Florida National Guard is in Puerto Rico coordinating all military airflow. To date, they have coordinated over 1,000 flights, bringing over 6,000 personnel and more than 8,000 tons of cargo in support of Puerto Rico in the Virgin Islands. 20,000 Puerto Rican residents have arrived in Florida since last week. And Governor Rick Scott working to make life easier for those Puerto Rico residents that are now living in Florida. Today, Scott suspended all fees required for occupational license applications for Puerto Ricans impacted by Hurricane Maria. This includes over 50 different individual professional license types, such as barbers and realtors. By suspending these fees, residents from Puerto Rico will be able to obtain a license from the state more quickly and then will be able to continue their careers here in Florida. Some of the region's top professionals will be educating and preparing the next workforce generation in our area tomorrow. The fourth annual State of Jobs Conference will start at 8.30 a.m. at Roberts Arena. Nearly 850 high school students from Manatee and Sarasota counties will be attending. Each student has chosen an industry track where they'll participate in sessions with local experts. Speakers will represent different career tracks, including healthcare, information technology, business, engineering, hospitality, and arts. The goal of the State of Jobs is to help students prepare for their future, while also telling the region's professional workforce what they're looking for when it comes to college preparation. Straight ahead, Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan will be back with your first alert forecast, plus some new changes in the Las Vegas shooting timeline. Stay with us. We'll have that story when we come back. Stay connected to your clients and new customers using ABC7 Digital Media Services. Our team of professionals provide a wide array of digital services to help you get the most out of your website. We specialize in building and helping you maintain the most effective digital solutions for your business. It's vital that your online presence stands out, so our experts will equip you with the best resources available. Trust ABC7 Digital Media Services to give you the right tools to grow your business. There are many choices when it comes to AC companies. Our advice? Choose a company that performs employee background checks and is licensed with top manufacturers like Daikin. Daikin offers a 12-year parts and labor limited warranty. For better comfort and value, call Elite Heating and Air. There's never been a better time to call California Closets. Now during our autumn upgrade event, save up to 20% when you upgrade to an Italian-inspired wood grain finish. Contact us for your free design consultation today. Visit our showroom or online at californiaclosets.com. Attention, Americans eligible for Medicare. Are you getting all the benefits you're entitled to? Did you know there may be money available to lower your medical prescription costs? Call Health Markets and we'll tell you if you qualify. Hi, I'm Dr. Martin Jitsi. It's a new Medicare year. That means more changes and more confusion. The key question is, what can you do now to ensure you get the care you need in the coming year? 
Call Health Markets today. You may qualify to save money on prescriptions. We'll help you find plans that may cost less, cover more, and could even lower your prescription costs to increase your savings. We help you find all the benefits you're entitled to, and we do it at no cost. Make sure you have what you need to get the care that's right for you. Find out if you qualify to receive extra help with your prescriptions. Call the number on the screen now. Representatives are standing by. For the last decade, SNS Motorsports of Sarasota has built custom high-performance vehicles for demanding clients worldwide. They're now bringing their 50-plus years of combined build expertise to the parts business. SRQ Performance Parts is your one-stop shop for all your performance parts and accessories. Keep up with the Suncoast. Watch your favorite ABC7 shows on your streaming device. There's never been a better time to call California Closets. Now during our autumn upgrade event, save up to 20% when you upgrade to an Italian-inspired wood grain finish. Contact us for your free design consultation today. Visit our showroom or online at californiaclosets.com. There are many choices when it comes to AC companies. Our advice? Choose a company that performs employee background checks and is licensed with top manufacturers like Daikin. Daikin offers a 12-year parts and labor limited warranty. For better comfort and value, call Elite Heating and Air. Bob, snowing in Colorado, fall all across the country, but here in Florida, it is still hot. Yeah, still hot <laughs> here and fires out west, too. I mean, you can't forget about those folks out there battling those intense fires, yeah. some of the worst fires I've ever seen in California. Uh, we had the hurricanes here. Obviously, those have since moved on, but season not quite over yet. Here's what's going on with our beautiful sunset this evening. Again, Lynn Shepard getting this from Siesta Key. Gorgeous shot there. Appreciate it. We had a lot of them come in. And, Computer's been running kind of slow, so I couldn't get to all of them, but I appreciate everyone sending their photos in the pics at mysuncoast.com. Fanway's a webcam showing pretty much uh, similar conditions tonight. We had a few brief showers moving on through. Not a lot of heavy rainfall, but a few will be around again tomorrow. Beautiful colors there that you see with some clouds and showers in off the distance there. Well, the uh, latest radar imagery showing some showers down to our south. Still lingering, but... Not much going on here. It's all pretty quiet currently, and looks like it'll stay that way too right through the morning hours. So should not be a problem for drop off tomorrow for all the school children. 80 degrees right now. The dew point 73. Dew point temperatures have been a little higher than average. That means our lows will be the same. Winds are out of the east at eight, though it can uh, continue to bring in a nice breeze and uh, the barometer 30.03 inches. That's on the rise. The high today was above average at 89. 86 is our normal and 94. The record set back in 1919 and the low this morning was 76. Our typical low is comfortable at 70. We're getting close to those 60s. Usually a couple of weeks into October, it starts to feel a lot better, but I don't know about this particular year. Our rainfall amount is well above average and we'll end the year above average because we're up already above uh, what our normal yearly amount is. And as far as the hourly forecast goes for Tuesday, looks good. High temperatures in the upper 80s. Now there will be a few isolated late day showers. That'll be about it. And they won't be much in terms of uh, the activity associated with them. The 11 p.m. radar picture depiction showing that that rain moves offshore. And then tomorrow with high pressure located off the Carolina coast, we'll get that east to southeasterly wind flow, which will generate one or two lone showers in the afternoon. Not a lot of rain. Similar conditions expected for Wednesday, Thursday, and then by Friday, things start to moisten up a bit as we look at a weak disturbance coming in. Off the Atlantic right now, the forecast models not really projecting too much to it. But we'll have to watch it very closely. Uh, a lot of dry air out ahead of it will inhibit its development anytime soon. You can see that mass of clouds right there. We have a trough of low pressure just to the west of it with a lot of dry air. So conditions are not favorable for that to develop. And most of the models suggest that uh, we'll have a little bit of a low pressure, but not too intense move across the state, possibly on Saturday and Sunday. This is moving the other way, though, heading east. And that is our 15th name storm, Ophelia. Our top winds have increased to 50 miles an hour. If this does become a hurricane, it'll be the 10th hurricane consecutive that we've had this season. And that will tie an all-time record uh, for the most consecutive hurricanes in a season. You'll see it moving off toward the east-northeast, though. So not a concern to any land area at this point and should not be uh, during its life. Now, satellite and radar picture showing the beginning of fall starting to take shape now over the central U.S. That's right, the snow falling 
uh, yesterday into parts of Colorado. That cold air sinking southward now. This low pressure kind of dragging all that air behind it and a counterclockwise swirl around that area of low pressure. Cold front now making its way through Dallas. The warm weather out ahead of it. Temperatures well above average across places like Atlanta and into uh, Dallas at 77. But look at that, Denver at 32. There are frost and freeze advisories out for the panhandle of Nebraska tonight. So not too far away. We'll start to see some of these fronts coming down our way. Uh, just a couple of weeks, usually three weeks now after October. Not this particular year. East winds turn to the north at 10 knots. Seas will be 2 to 3 feet with a light chop out there. And the water temperature at 85 degrees. UV index will be high. We'll load up on the sunscreen tomorrow. And the tides upcoming. The high tide will be at 303 and a low at 1139 tomorrow morning. Forecast is calling for partly cloudy. Mild conditions tonight, 75 for a low tomorrow. Only a 20% chance for a shower, a high of 90. And the extended forecast calling for, yes, above average temperatures through the weekend. And above average chances for rain over the weekend at 50%. Jacqueline. All right, thank you, Bob. Breaking news tonight, a Texas Tech police officer has been shot and killed after making a welfare check on a student. Upon entering the room, officers found evidence of drugs and drug paraphernalia. Officers brought the suspect to the police station for standard debriefing when that suspect pulled a gun and shot an officer in the head. The suspect fled on foot and the school campus was on lockdown, but police have just identified that suspect as 19 year old freshman Hollis Daniels, who is now in custody. A state of emergency across California tonight as homes, neighborhoods and thousands of acres continue to burn. The fire turning deadly, officials confirming at least 10 people have died. This firestorm is shaping up to be one of the worst that California has ever seen. ABC's Donia Backus is in Santa Rosa tonight with the latest. The widespread devastation in Northern California looks almost apocalyptic. At least 1,500 structures are now unrecognizable. This is the stuff you have nightmares about, you know, your, your home burning down. Cat Keller's childhood home is gone. Entire neighborhoods have been wiped out in Santa Rosa, California. It looks like a bomb went off. Nothing left of, you know, of these homes. The fire there ripping through a mobile home park, shopping center, and surrounding the city's hospital. Staff quickly rushing this gurney down the street as the hospital was evacuated. We're all in a state of devastation right now. I'm in shock. Okay, Chris, this is your life right here. Tens of thousands told to evacuate, having only minutes to grab what they need. I don't know if I'm going to have a home when I go home. More than 80,000 acres charred as multiple wildfires burned their way across eight counties, including Napa and Sonoma. We are a resilient county and we will come back from this. But right now we need to grieve because the loss is significant. And in Southern California, what started as a small brush fire in Anaheim erupting into a more than 2,500 acre blaze within hours. This firefight is far from over. Firefighters will be working through the night to get a handle on the flames. And we're told with so many fires burning at once, resources are running thin. Donya Backus, ABC News, Santa Rosa, California. Well, police now say the Las Vegas killer shot a Mandalay Bay security guard before he began firing onto the country music festival crowd in Las Vegas. Clark County Sheriff Joseph Lombardo said today that Jesus Campos was investigating an open door alarm on the 32nd floor when Stephen Paddock shot through that door and injured him. Police say that happened at about 9.59 p.m. on October 1st, which changes the original timeline. Yes, the timeline associated with the original shot and Mr. Campos has changed through investigation as I have conveyed to you from the very beginning and your zest for information and my zest to ensure the public safety and the calming of their minds is some things are going to change. Now they are minute changes, okay, there's not this um, all encompassing answer associated with the information that we presented before. In other words, it's not completely inaccurate. But what we have learned is Mr. Campos was encountered by the suspect prior to his, uh, his shooting to the outside world. Authorities have said Paddock began shooting from his Mandalay Bay Hotel and Casino room at 10.05 p.m. and that he continued firing for about 10 or 11 minutes. 
Lombardo says authorities do not, not yet know what made Paddock stop shooting, and they have found no evidence to show that there was a second shooter. Well, therapy dogs are being used to comfort the Las Vegas shooting victims. Nine therapy dogs joined counselors from the Red Cross to help those victims today. The animals give the victims joy and help with the stress relief. Officials say the animals help victims talk about what has happened to them. Now, the trauma from the shooting is something that is likely to stay with them for life. But these animals will help by giving them confidence to speak about the incident and help with the healing process. It was a Columbus Day cleanup for many people along the Gulf Coast today as Hurricane Nate left residents with flooding and some power outages, but luckily no major damage. Omar Jimenez has the latest from Spanish Fort, Alabama. Many Gulf Coast residents will be spending Columbus Day cleaning up after Hurricane Nate. Crews in Gulf Shores, Alabama are already at work on what little mess Nate did leave behind on the beaches as they set up for the shrimp festival today. We'll be able to come in here, clean things up, and directly behind us will be the setup for the tents and the vendors, and looking forward to a hopeful good forecast for the rest of the week. And that forecast is looking pretty good for most of the week. The flooded causeway in Mobile, Alabama has also reopened in traffic and holiday vacationers, as well as those popular casinos in Biloxi, Mississippi that had shut down. Even the hardest hit ones, the Hard Rock Cafe, is reopened after the parking lot flooded early Sunday morning. Remnants of Hurricane Nate are still producing heavy rainfall as it moves up the northeast, causing possible travel delays today, as well as concerns for possible flash flooding across parts of the Ohio Valley and Appalachians. In Spanish Fort, Alabama, I'm Omar Jimenez. Well, sports is next, but first, here's Jimmy Kimmel. Here's a look at what some people are calling our show. I, he can't let Mike Pence have credit for anything. He, I am so proud of Mike Pence for doing the awesome thing I told him to do. At Tidewell Hospice, we know it's never too late to say thank you to our military veterans. The Tidewell Honors Veterans Program has provided care to more than 13,000 military families since 2008. Tidewell volunteers help honor veterans through special pinning ceremonies that demonstrate our appreciation for the freedom our veterans fought to defend. If you know a veteran who can benefit from end-of-life care, call or visit Tidewell.org today. Tidewell Hospice, it's more than you think. Hi, I'm Chef Bob. Watch Aprons in the Kitchen every Wednesday morning on ABC7, where we'll be serving up the most awesome dishes. Then stop by your neighborhood Publix, pick up the recipe card, and all the ingredients. Need more space in your place? The More Space Place can help. With Murphy beds that disappear to reveal a home office, living room, or den. Custom closets with designated areas for your shoes, bags, wardrobe, and accessories. Custom built entertainment centers, garage storage systems, and more. The More Space Place has three showrooms next to Sunny's on US 41 South in Sarasota, on Lakewood Ranch Boulevard just south of State Route 64 in Bradenton, and on Tamiami Trail next to Panera Bread in Port Charlotte. Put more space in your place at the More Space Place. Today, everyone is looking for carpeting that lasts longer. G Freed has you covered with Karistan. With a legacy of quality and integrity, we provide you with a huge selection of Karistan carpets with exclusive lifetime limited warranties. All installed by our highly skilled, highly knowledgeable team. Come ask us why Karistan is the best and most durable. G Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. Is your old garage door stuck or broken? Would a new one give you a lift? Let Precision Door Overhead Garage Door Service of Sarasota come to the rescue with prompt and affordable repair service. Replacement doors come with an array of styles and colors, and they are rated to meet and exceed Florida standards. From estimates to installation, your satisfaction is our priority. If you're not 100% satisfied with any product, service, or installation, we will make it right, because Precision Door Service is a name you can trust. This is an important medical announcement. Xeralto and Pradoxa have been linked to uncontrollable bleeding and even death. If you've been prescribed one of these drugs and have experienced these dangerous side effects, you may be entitled to substantial compensation. Studies show that Pradoxa can cause more heart attacks than warfarin, and other countries have already issued safety warnings against this drug. Call now for a free assessment of your case and potential money damages. The call is confidential. There's no cost, and you may be eligible. Juries have awarded millions of dollars to Pradoxa victims, and thousands of Xarelto victims are filing their legal cases. 
Call the Drug Watch Hotline. If you or a loved one used Xeralto or Pradoxa and experienced uncontrollable bleeding, brain hemorrhage, or even death, you must call now. Call 800-793-6055. 800-793-6055. Now, sports. The Buccaneers have a new kicker, and he's a familiar face to Bucs fans. Former Buccaneer Patrick Murray will be kicking for Tampa Bay this weekend when the Bucs play the Arizona Cardinals. The team holding a tryout for several kickers today, and Murray impressed the most. He was signed after Nick Folk missed six kicks in the last two games. The Bucs placing Folk on injured reserve with a minor injury. And Miami Dolphins offensive line coach Chris Forrester has resigned from his position. A video surfaced late last night appearing to show him snorting a white powdery substance at a desk. Hours after the 56 second video was posted on social media, he announced his resignation in a statement released by the team. It's unclear when or where that video was made. ESPN has suspended host Jamelli Hill after she tweeted about the Dallas Cowboys and the controversy involving players kneeling during the national anthem. Cowboys owner Jerry Jones said players who disrespect the flag will not play. Hill tweeted on Sunday criticizing Jones' ultimatum, saying it puts an unfair burden on players. She encouraged people who disagree with Jones to put pressure on his advertisers. Now ESPN says it has suspended Hill for two weeks for a second violation of its social media guidelines. Hill previously came under fire for her tweets criticizing President Donald Trump when she called him a white supremacist. Four playoff games in Major League Baseball today. The defending World Series champs, the Chicago Cubs, hosting the Nationals for Game 3 with the series tied one all. The Chicago Cubs beat the Washington Nationals tonight 2-1. To and the L.A. Dodgers are beating the Diamondbacks 1-0 right now in the top of the fourth. The Houston Astros beat the Red Sox tonight 5-4. To and the Yankees beat the Indians 7-3. to That's a look at your sports tonight. We'll have the winning lotto numbers when we come back. There's never been a better time to call California Closets. Now during our autumn upgrade event, save up to 20% when you upgrade to an Italian-inspired wood grain finish. Contact us for your free design consultation today. Visit our showroom or online at californiaclosets.com. Let me introduce you to the ultimate Florida window. Do you feel safer with this or this? You'll be proud to buy more, save more. Volume discounts on four or more windows. This is an important medical announcement. Barred IVC filters have been linked to punctured veins and problems with migration. Anyone who's received a barred IVC filter must receive medical monitoring and may be entitled to substantial compensation. If you have the Bard Recovery G2 or G2 Express filter, you are in a class of patients who should be compensated for some expenses. Call now for a free assessment of your case and potential money damages. This call is confidential. There's no cost and you may be eligible. Juries have awarded millions of dollars to people who should have been warned about the risks of the Bard IVC filters. Call the IVC filter hotline if you or a loved one has received an IVC filter and experienced a vein puncture or required medical monitoring. You must call now. Call 800-329-3089. 800-329-3089. If you're over the age of 50 and considering buying an annuity in the next 60 days, I have some important news for you. Don't buy an annuity until you understand the pros and cons of annuities. A free book to help you maximize your retirement income from television host and three-time author Josh Melberg has been released. This book reveals little-known truths about annuity strategies in simple-to-understand terms. Grab a pen right now because we are about to offer you this free book that unlocks the five little-known secrets we believe baby boomers and seniors should know before buying an annuity. Call 800-307-2040 now and 
you'll receive a free copy of Josh Milberg's book, Next Gen Annuity Strategies Revealed. As a bonus, we'll also send you the number one mistakes retirees are making with their investments today and a free DVD on how you can get up to 33% more income in retirement. Call 800-307-2040 to have your free information kit rushed to your door. Again, that's 800-307-2040. Get breaking news alerts focused on the Sun Coast. Download the ABC7 News app. There's never been a better time to call California Closets. Now during our autumn upgrade event, save up to 20% when you upgrade to an Italian-inspired wood grain finish. Contact us for your free design consultation today. Visit our showroom or online at californiaclosets.com. The Florida Lottery winning numbers are sponsored by Frontier Fios. Right. What can we expect to wake up to in the morning? Well, we're wrapping it up with some nice weather to start things off. We'll be in the low to mid 70s to start today, and then we'll warm up quickly though to 90 degrees. Not very fall-like at all, but <laughs> uh, the rain chance is staying low right through Friday, really, and then the increasing rain chance over the weekend as a result of a uh, you know, tropical disturbance mm. moving across the state. So it's not over yet. Awesome. All right. Thank you, Bob. Thank you for joining us. Have a good night.